Hello my dear students and welcome to today's session. The topic for the day is reproduction in plants as you all can see on your screens also. So to start with, see children, first of all let me tell you what is reproduction. What is reproduction? Reproduction means to reproduce. When the parent reproduce the baby of the same kind that is called reproduction. Okay. The process in which, if I talk about the process in which young ones of the same kind are produced by the parent or an individual, it is called reproduction. Okay, the parent is producing its baby or the young one as it the parent is. Okay, that is called reproduction. So today we are going to study about reproduction in plants. Fine. To start with, plants are capable of producing by three methods okay they are producing by three methods these are vegetative reproduction asexual and sexual reproduction okay they are producing by three methods okay fine first is vegetative reproduction second is asexual and third is sexual reproduction fine children now we would be studying it in detail move to the next page Asexual reproduction, if I talk about in this type of uh, in this type of reproduction, an individual is capable of reproducing by budding, spore formation, or fragmentation. Okay, that means when this asexual reproduction is carried on, no male and female parent is required. Okay, one parent can go for the reproduction. Fine, children. If I talk about vegetative reproduction, okay. In this type of reproduction, a new plant emerges from the cell, tissue or any other part of the parent plant, vegetative parts, okay, beet leaf, beet branches, beet stem, okay, fine children. In vegetative reproduction, you do not require germination from a seed, fine children. Then if you talk about sexual reproduction, in this type of reproduction, there is a formation of seeds by fusion of gametes. Two individuals are needed to carry out sexual reproduction. The male and female gametes meet, fertilize and form a zygote or seed. And this zygote develops from a form to form a new plant. See, I told you about asexual, only one single parent is required. In vegetative reproduction, the vegetative parts, that is the leaf, the branch, the stem, we can have the plant growth from there okay but in sexual reproduction two parents are required one is male and the other one is female fine children now if i talk about asexual reproduction you can see on your screens also now here as asexual reproduction is defined as the process in which new individual plants are formed from a single parent i told you just now in asexual uh, reproduction, only single parent, one parent is required. Fine. Three methods of asexual reproduction are budding, spore formation and fragmentation. Okay. Asexual reproduction is further divided into three parts. You can see on your screens also, that is budding, spore formation and fragmentation. Fine. If I talk about budding, what are, what is bud? Buds. Buds are kali jise kehte, the un, the flower which has not bloomed yet, okay, that is bud, okay. So, in budding, in this type of asexual reproduction in which of new organisms develop from the outgrowth of the parent plant to form or forms a bud, which later separates to form an individual plant, okay. If uh, uh, there is a beautiful example for that, yeast plant is there, yeast, okay, what does it do? This is the yeast plant when it wants to reproduce what happens you can see this a bud begins to form on parent cell okay it begins to form and then you can see it's a unicellular plant yeast is a unicellular that means it has got only one cell and you can see there's nucleus is also there when this uh, plant yeast wants to grow what happens it starts forming this projection okay this is a bud and when this bud is formed the nucleus also develops over here okay you can see further 
this has been separated now this is the parent cell and this is the daughter cell which has been separated and it keeps on multiplying like this okay so budding is a budding takes place in yeast cells in this case the formation of a bud takes place and grows while still uh, attached to the parent cell okay it is after only this growth the daughter cell separates from the parent cell fine children now come to the next page and i have told you about budding budding is when it a, a example for that was yeast plant whenever the yeast wants to reproduce a small projection comes like this which i have shown you just now on the screen and what happens as your this plant is a unicellular plant you cannot see this is very minute you cannot see with your naked eye it has got one nucleus over here which i have shown you just now so when this uh, plants wants to reproduce this projection is there and when this uh, full bud grows what happens that they it has a nucleus all the nucleus also the daughter cell which has developed from the parent cell has got a nucleus also fine children now we'll talk about spore formation okay we will talk about spore formation as you all can see on your screens also spore formation takes place in many eukaryotic organisms like plants algae and fungi some of the plants that undergo spore formation are moss and ferns in this metal spores are formed that grow into individual new plants when the favorable conditions return spores are spherical shaped thick walled reproductive bodies they are stored in capsule of the plant in a state this actually helps the plant to out overcome harsh and unfavorable conditions so once conditions become favorable the capsule bursts releasing the spores these spores then germinate to form plants okay you must have seen ferns and mosses around you okay they grow specially in the forest area wherever the dampness is there jahan par bhi aapko damp places hogi it will grow there okay what happens whenever it, uh, what is there this these spores they are covered by a thick wall okay why in case the conditions are not favorable it will not grow but once the condition are normal what happens this breaks and new plant starts growing from these spores fine children now i'll tell you about the third one that is fragmentation okay fragmentation is one of the most common asexual reproduction that takes place in algae let us see let us see reproduction in saprogia it occurs in multicellular organism in which the body of an organism forms specific zones at which fragmentation occurs and the body splits into fragment fragment means pieces here the plant is uh, breaking into pieces each fragment grows into a new adult plant fragmentation occurs in organisms like centrobacteria molds and lichens okay i told you about budding the buds are there then spores small holes are there then fragmentation the parts it is uh, the reproduction is taking from the parts of the plant fine children now we'll talk about vegetative reproduction okay i think this is clear to you all now you can see on your screens of vegetative reproduction okay in this type of asexual reproduction it is a type of asexual reproduction means no two parents are required only one single parent can have this okay in this case vegetative parts of a plants like roots stems and leaves can be used for reproduction vegetative parts kon kon se hote leaves i told you i told you about roots i told you about stems from these three parts vegetative reproduction can be done vegetative reproduction can actually can take place naturally or can be carried out by artificial means okay now in it is a process in which a new plant is produced without the formation of spores or seeds you do not need to have seeds for this vegetative reproduction 
whenever the seed is involved that means it is a sexual reproduction because there you would be needing two parents one male and other female but if i talk about vegetative reproduction or asexual reproduction only one single parent can is capable of reproducing its other kind okay now if i talk about natural means now in this case there is no involvement of any artificial means performed by human beings vegetative parts like root stem and leaf are used to carry out this process okay now you can see on your screens also what are the different vegetative parts i told you just now about roots so we will be studying about the roots now some plants have tuberous roots like carrot radish dahlia etc these plants store food in their roots children have you seen the carrot it's all swollen okay the carrot grows under the ground and the root it's all swollen because all the food is stored in that okay when these two roots are planted it is well prepared soil it gives rise to adventurous root these buds grow to form leafy shoots under favorable conditions these leafy shoots are called slips these slips are separated from the parent plant and stored in the soil it then grows to form a new plant fine now by using stem children you must have seen many plants they grow by using its stem if a uh, very common example of it is have you seen money plant in your houses if you want to grow a money plant you just take a small stem put it in water or put in soil it will start growing because the roots will develop from that part only fine so some plants like oxel and strawberry have a weak aerial stems these stems run parallel to the ground almost touching it these horizontal stems are called runners or stolons you can find the type of uh, stems in strawberry also so these horizontal stems here you can see they are running parallel to the ground and once what happens the bud starts growing again it will grow have root then again it will further go okay at places where the stems touch the ground adventurous roots are formed wherever the uh, stem it's touching the ground okay St roots start growing from it these roots grow into the ground and holds the plant into the soil okay as the plant grows it may be detached at places where there is an outgrowth of adventurous root once it gets detached from the parent plant it grows into an adult plant and survives individually okay by using stems wherever these stem the plants which grow by stem what happens they have very weak stem and what happens they run parallel to the ground you can see they are running parallel to the ground and wherever uh, this uh, stem touches the ground it start it uh, start growing over there the roots comes out and you can detach it now it can grow into its own okay it can grow into its own fine children now the next one bulb see children bulb as you can see on your screens also some plants have stems modified into bulbs that are short and arranged in a concentric circles around the stem an example of a bulb is an onion okay have you seen an onion pyaas that is a actually a modi uh, that uh, onion is a modified stem okay the bulb is where the plant stores its food okay the bulb contains apical and lateral buds these apical buds are used for next year's flowering shoot whereas lateral buds give rise to new shoots okay the shoot grows to form new plants and eventually develop bulb of their own children this is a very beautiful example of a bulb the uh, onions you must have seen the onions are fleshy they are uh, round sort of thing is there and they have this you can see all this is there sort sort of th things are there these are concentric circles okay around the stem and the bulb is where the plant stores its food the bulb kya hota hai iske andar sara food store hota hai plant ka fine children 
now the next one tuber potato potato is aloo okay potato tuber is a modified stem that grows under the ground and stores food for the plant it is swollen and has eyes and nodes on it if you observe carefully each eye bears many buds these buds give rise to new shoots that grow into individual plants see children this is a potato you can see on your screens and it has got small small eyes okay on it you can see the, these eyes are there now what happens you can uh, cut this eye okay and plant in the soil you can just put in the soil again you after some, some days after few days what you will you'll notice more potatoes coming out okay and this uh, potato is the modified stem again all the it is swollen okay and it stores all the food of the plant fine children now come to the next page okay rhizosome okay now in some plants the stems grow horizontally into the soil what is horizontally this is vertical and this is horizontal okay this way it is horizontal in some plants the stem grows horizontally into the soil it is capable of producing roots and shoots from its nodes you can see the ginger plant this is uh, the rhizosome which is swollen as it stores food the old parts of the leaf form scales around the rhizosome rhizosome the lateral buds give rise to new rhizomes ginger and turmeric are common rhizosomes okay children what happens this is the ginger okay it will it is in which form it is lying in the soil it is in the horizontal form now what happens it has got all scales on its body you can see here different these scales these scaly leaves are there and these are buds okay now the old parts of the leaf form scales around the rhizome the old leaf these are the the scales are the old leaf the lateral buds give rise to new rhizomes and a beautiful example of is ginger and turmeric turmeric hoti hai haldi aapki okay then if we talk about corns okay some plants like the gladiolus have short and swollen stems at the base this swollen part is where the plant stores its food children whenever the swollen part you will find in any plant that means that is the food of the plant it is called a corm each corm when grown separately forms a new plant this is not corn this is corms okay so the swollen part is where the plant stores food as i told you and it is called a corm each corm when grows separately forms a new plant now a beautiful example of a, a plant which grows through leaves is bryophyllum okay by using leaves some plants grow by leaves only some plants like bryophyllum and begonia have large leaves these leaves grow outwards on their margins these outwards are actually adventitious buds these buds develop shoots and grow into new plants they eventually fall from the main plant and start going on on its own as an individual plant see children this is a leaf of a bryophyllum okay and you what we you will see at the this edge okay new plants starts growing okay once it is properly developed once this plant is properly developed it detaches detaches from the or it gets separate from the parent plant and now it is capable of its individual growth fine now moving to the next page vegetative reproduction by artificial method okay artificial means the man is helping now earlier it was taking place on its own but now this vegetative reproduction is by artificial means artificial means means the human being is involved in this okay the method of vegetative reproduction in which artificial means are used to give rise to a new plant from the parent plant is called artificial vegetative reproduction first is cutting okay what happens in cutting you must have seen a rose plant okay and uh, at times a gardener the person who looks after your garden or you can even if you know the technique you can also do the this what do you do 
cutting is done for the plants like rose especially china rose that is hibiscus in this method a part of the stem root or leaf is cut from the parent plant okay it is then planted in a suitable soil and watered after some time the planted part develops into a new shoot that grows into a whole new plant what will uh, the see this is a plant rose plant see this is the rose plant okay this is have different leaf stems and all what you will do you will cut a part of the plant okay you will cut it from here and what you will do you will put this part again in the soil okay and after some time you will see that it has started growing the root has developed and a proper shoot system is also developed okay this is called cutting fine children now if i talk about grafting what is grafting grafting is also done in plants like rose mango okay so grafting is done for plants like rose mango guava to develop a new plant with hybrid characteristics hybrid means better characteristics than the parent plant okay this method involves the following step first a part of a plant with buds is taken this is called the sickle another plant is taken its stem is cut and slit into roots with its roots keeping it intact in the soil this is called stock now what happens you take a uh, uh, you what do you do you will take a part of a plant which has got bud ek part aap loge plant ka jiske andar bud hogi bud means kali hogi theek hai you will take that and other plant what you will do and this part which has a bud is called sickle okay now another plant is taken after that you will go take an other plant also its stem is cut and slit into roots ab kya kara humne see you can see here also the stem is cut and slit you have cut a put a cut over here it's slitted okay with its root keeping attached in the soil means the part this part is all in the soil okay this part is all in the soil now now the sickle is placed on of fitted into the slit of the stock now what will you do the part which you have cut see this part you have cut and this is the other plant you will penetrate you will put this part over here in this uh, plant which you have uh, cut it okay now the sickle is placed or fitted into the slit of the stock this arrangement is then firmly bound by or tied by a cloth now what will you do you will put some cloth around it okay this stock supplies water and nutrients to the sickle after some time a new cell develops at the attachment site of the sickle and stock its sickle eventually give rises to shoots and develops into a whole new plant with a characteristic of both the parent plant okay now what will happen as we have done it to get a high uh, a better breed hybrid so what will happen the plant which will grow from this that means from the sickle and from the stock will be of new variety okay it would be having both the characteristics of the stuff plant which was cut and the plant on which it was fixed fine children now we'll come to layering okay layering is done for plants like grapes and bougainvillea in this method the part the stem of the plant is lowered such that it touches the soil now what happens in which plant we are doing we are doing it in plants like grapes and bougainvillea okay they don't have a hard stem they have soft and weak stems what you will do in this method the stem of the plant is lowered in such such that it touches the ground suppose this is a bougainvillea okay now what will you do you will bring the stem down so that it touches the soil this is the soil and you, what you are doing you are putting it like this this portion of the stem is then covered with the moist soil now once that it touches you will cov be covering it with a soil after some time the stem this stem develops roots once the root develops the stem can be detached from the parent plant it give rises to shoots and then forms a whole new plant once what happen you are covering the part of the stem with moist soil and once the root start developing you can detach from the parent plant fine children now come to the next page 
टिश्यू कल्चर आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट आर्टिफिशियल क्या कहते हैं रिप्रोडक्शन बाय डिफरेंट मेथड्स जस्ट अ क्विक रिकैप ऑफ दैट वॉट एवर आई हैव टोल्ड यू जस्ट नो इट इज द फर्स्ट इज आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट कटिंग सेकेंड इज ग्राफ्टिंग थर्ड इज लेयरिंग एंड नाउ द फोर्थ वन इज टिश्यू कल्चर ओके नाउ इन दिस मेथड a growing tip of a plant is taken and put in a nutrient medium kept in test tubes this nutrient medium helps in the development of roots once the root develops then it is planted in a nutrient medium that helps in the development of shoots once the roots and shoots arise these plants are planted in a suitable soil they grow to form whole new plant what will happen you will take a growing tip the part which is in growing form of a plant and put in a nutrient medium you can put in a test tube this nutrient medium help in the development of roots first root will develop and after some time the shoot will start developing okay once the root and shoot are there you can plant that plant into the soil earlier it was in the test tube okay fine children now what are the advantages of vegetative reproduction new plants grow very quickly from the vegetative parts okay the new plant which are growing from through vegetative reproduction they grow very fast the offsprings are the exact copy of the parent plant new varieties can be obtained in the offspring when desired okay disease free or disease resistant varieties of the plants can be grown okay now we'll talk about sexual reproduction i told you in sexual reproduction two parents are required one is the male and the other one is female okay so for sexual reproduction two parents are required one male and the other female each parent plant form gametes the fusion of these gametes should take place to form zygote this zygote then develops into a new organism wherever the plants the sexual reproduction will happen in the plant with the seed of the plant okay with the seed of the plant in sexual reproduction what is involved the seed of the plant is involved fine children now flowers are the reproductive part of a plant stamen is the male part whereas pistil is the female part okay flowers jo hote hai that those are that flower is known as the reproductive part of the plant okay now in the flower you will be finding stamen and pistil stamen is the male part and pistil is the female part if a plant has both the male and female pa parts it is uh, called a complete or bisexual flower in case some flowers do not have one of the reproductive parts they either have the pistil or the stamen such flowers are called incomplete or unisexual flower a flower which has got both the parts that is the stamen and the pistil it is called a bisexual flower or a complete flower because every all the process would be taking place it within the flower only but in case the flowers which do not have either of them either pistil or stamen those uh, the reproduction would be incomplete so they are known as incomplete or unisexual flowers fine children now we'll talk about stamen stamen as i told you is a male part of the flower so stamen is the male part of the flower it consists of a long filament with an almost round structures at its stem this is called anther okay anther contain pollen grains inside it ओके okay, क्या होता है ये स्टेमिन एक मेल पार्ट होता है फ्लावर का एंड इट इज अ लॉन्ग फिलेमेंट सी यू कैन सी इन दिस डायग्राम आल्सो ओवर ईयर यू कैन सी ओवर ईयर आल्सो सी द फ्लावर इज देयर व्हाट यू विल सी आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट स्टेमिन वेयर इज द स्टेमिन ईयर सी Stamen is the male part of the flower. It consists of a long filament and are almost around its structure. It is called the anther. Here, you will find it here. You can see on your screens. This anther is here. Okay. Another uh, 
anther contain pollens you will be finding small small dots are there powdery substances that there and that is known as pollens okay those are the part through which the reproduction will take place okay this is all powdery you must have seen few plants if you touch them a sort of powdery thing is left on your fingers okay that is the pollen grains now if i talk about pistils pistil is the female part of the flower okay pistil is the female part of the flower of the plant it consists of long tube like structures called the style that joins the stigma and the ovary the ovary is a solid part of the pistil and at the base that contains the ovum stigma at the tip of the pistil is sticky part that helps attaching pollen grains the pollen grain has to go into the sorry pistil is the female part and stamen is the male part i told you so these pollen grains have to enter and pollen grains you will be finding on stamen so this has to enter into pistil so it can it stigma at the tip of the pistil is a sticky part it is very sticky through which the on which sorry this uh, pollen grains get stick okay now coming to the next page pollination what is pollination pollination is the transfer of pollen grains okay the transfer of pollen grains from anther to so from st stamen to pistil okay so the pollens are packed inside the anther the pollens are the male gametes they need to re reach the ovum for fertilization to take place the process in which pollen grains are transferred from anther to stigma is called pollination kya bolte hain usko hum pollination and pollination are of two types one one is self pollination and other one is cross pollination types of pollination in, in if pollination occurs between the anther and stigma of the same flower it is called self pollination if pollination occurs between the anther and stigma of different flowers it is called cross pollination okay there are two types of pollination self and cross okay in self uh, it is uh, the pollens are transferred from anther to the stigma of the same flower but in cross they are transferred to another flower fine now there are different agents of pollination pollination kya hai jo choti choti wo hai pollens hai pollen grains hai it has to the male part has to reach to the female part okay so there are different agents of pollination first is wind pollination okay wind pollination the pollens do not just come in contact with the stigma they need agents like wind water and insect to carry them to the stigma of the flower first we will be studying about wind pollination okay what happens in wind pollination wind pollination is brought by blowing wind whenever the wind blows what happens the pollen grains they are carried away with the wind because pollens are very light okay when the wind blows the pollen grains from the anther of the flowers are carried along with it okay and wind pollination is helpful in flowers that have small or no petals okay they either have very small petals petals are the colorful part of the flower or no petals at all without the petals the anther and the stigma remain exposed to the blowing wind the pollen carried by the winds comes and rest on the stigma thus pollination occurs example of it is wheat and corn what happens in wind pollination whenever the wind blows jab bhi hawa chalti hai what happens the pollens it also gets blown away by the wind now in flowers which do not have petals or the petals are very small petals is the i told you is the colored part of the plant what happens now the pollens they get stick on the stigma okay and now the pollination starts taking place fine children now second is insect pollination you must have seen butterflies there are many insects which keep on sitting on the flowers what happens whenever they stick uh, sit on that flower the pollens they get stick on the body now the butterfly suppose they are uh this is a garden okay there are many flowers over here okay what is happening now the butterfly is sitting on it okay once the butterfly sits on the flower 
the pollens or get stick on its body now it is going from one flower to other flower the other flower they, like this it keeps on going and what happens the pollens they also get transferred with its bo body okay so insect pollination occurs in flowers that have large colored petals okay the insects come and sit on the petals to collect nectar while doing so the pollens get stuck on the hairy body the insects and flies and sits on the other flowers they rub against the petals thus dropping the pollen stick on their body they that i have already explained to you okay now the next pollination the next type of pollination is water pollination there are many plants which grow inside the water also as you know like if i talk about lotus water lily they all grow in the water so in some aquatic plants pollination is carried out with the help of water water releases their pollen in the water flower sorry flowers release their pollen in the water the flowing water carries the pollen to the other flowers what is happening the, the water when the pollen get mixed in the water the water is carrying the pollen with it and what happens what whichever flower is coming in its way it the pollen get stick on that flower fine children now fertilization we'll talk about fertilization now you can see on your screens also fertilization after pollination comes fertilization after pollination takes place the stigma secretes a sticky fluid okay pollination ke baad kya hota hai jo stigma hota hai flower ka it secretes a sticky liquid the pollen responds to this fluid and starts growing the species of the flower will match with the parent plant they form a long tube called the pollen tube this pollen tube form grows into a pistil reaches its ovary the male gamete then travels through this tube to the ovum and fuses with the fuses with it to form zygote this process is called fertilization a zygote is formed as a result of fertilization okay am i clear in this fertilization now seed formation how is the seed form in the plants how is the seed formed in the plants we will be studying now okay see once zygote is formed what is zygote zygote have you must have seen if i talk about a rose flower okay if i talk about a rose flower you must have seen after the petals and all they fall what happens this is a swollen part this is a zygote actually okay the swollen part is the zygote now what is happening once the zygote is formed the pistil and the stamen with a on fall off i told you nothing would be left on the flower okay jaise zygote mota ho jata hai this is the zygote it is a swollen something sort of thing all the petals and all everything will fall off now in some plants the petals and sepals also falls off the ovaries contain nutrients that supply food to the growing zygote the zygote develops by cell division how is it developing by cell division the walls of the ovules form a hard layer protecting the zygote within it once the hard layer formation form the seed is mature you must have seen this is very hard also if you are going to touch the zygote you will find it is somewhat hard okay now once the hard layer for formation is formed the seed is mature a seed is a small embryotic plant covered by a hard layer seed hota kya hai okay it has got a baby plant okay seed is somewhat like this okay you will be having a baby plant also inside it okay now fruit formation how is the fruit formation taking place i told you about seed formation now it is about fruit fruit formation how the fruit is formed now you can see on your screens also the walls of the ovary begin to swell once seed formation takes place jab seed ban jata hai to what happens this ovary sorry this it starts swelling swelling means it becomes fatter okay it forms the fruit the fruit may have one or more than one seeds inside it okay and what does the fruit contain fruit also contain the seeds in them okay there are many fruits which have many seeds in them there are such fruits also which do not have any seed in it 
fine children now dispersal of seeds how do dispersal of seeds takes place if all the seeds of the plant fall at the same time they will not get enough water and nutrients for their growth hence seeds need to fall as far of places where water and nutrients are available in plenty for seeds to fall at far off places they need to be carried by wind water or animals the spreading of seeds to far off places or for germination is called dispersal of seed if i talk about this is a plant okay it has got all flowers and fruits and seed what happens when the seeds will fall over here at one place only all the seeds will be scattered at one point now all the seeds are not getting enough condition to grow okay few of them will grow few of them will not grow so in case we want proper uh, growth of the plant what we need to do we need to uh, have this dispersal of seed at far off places okay so that all the seeds can have favorable conditions to grow okay so the spreading of seed at far off places is called dispersal of seed and it occurs by with the help of wind water and animals fine children now next page first is dispersal by explosion how the uh, seeds are dispersed okay kis tarike se disperse hogi means it will be carried by away okay in this case the fruit in this case the fruit burst open with such force that seeds inside it get scattered when the seeds find favorable conditions they start germinating seed of pea plant lupin and balsam are dispersed this way beta see example of a very beautiful example of dispersal by uh, explosion is pea plant what happens the pea plants the seed it uh, what happens the fruit okay the fruit gets burst patak se ekdam burst hota hai zor se burst hota hai what happens when it is bursting with force what happens the seeds which were inside that fruit it will be carried far off and wherever it will grow once it gets favorable conditions to grow it will start growing fine children now dispersal by wind some seeds have wings like structures or small hairs like tufts or threads that act like a parachute and carry them to far off places when the wind blows dandelion and maple seeds are dispersed in this way especially in summers you must have seen in the air you will be finding a small uh, sort of this like this would be in the air hai na and you try to sometimes catch it okay a small like this would be there okay i'll make it again for you you can we see this especially in summers you will be seeing this is all every way it is blowing so this is nothing but a dandelion okay these uh, uh, seeds they have a parachute like structure when the wind blows it starts blowing with the wind and wherever the wind stop it falls down and if it finds proper favorable conditions for growth it starts growing otherwise it keeps on moving with the wind fine children now dispersal by water the next one is i told i have already told you about dispersal by explosion dispersal by wind now we'll be doing by dispersal by water the especially uh, the war aquatic plants if i talk about some seeds some seeds have a spongy coat that helps them float on water for example a coconut seed has a layer of jute like fiber that makes them light and helps them float on water the seed gets washed up and some on some beach and start germinating where the favorable conditions are there if i talk about coconut coconut plant it always grow on the water side okay where on the coastal areas where if what happens when this fruit falls into the water the water starts carrying the fruit okay the fruit has seeds also and the place wherever the it finds suitable condition it will stop over there and start germinating fine children now the last one is dispersal by animals children there are many animals which graze okay if i talk about cow all grass eating animals are there if i talk about 
insects also there are few insects which sit on the flower and collects nectar okay now see dispersal by animals some animals eat fruit and throw the seeds elsewhere some have hairy bodies when the animals rub against the plants the seeds get stuck on their hairy body the animals move to different places and the seeds may fall from their body anyway animals like squirrels burrow their food under the ground and forget these seeds germinating when the conditions are favorable there are many plant animals which eat also what happens whenever they excrete the seed also comes out there are many animals which eat grass what happen they are that uh, seeds they it, it gets stick on its body and wherever the plant this these uh, animals they rub themselves the seeds falls and if the conditions are favorable the plant will start going there only okay so now there is a ch chart over here which is uh, telling you about the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction okay you can see on your screens also and i have told you about asexual reproduction only one parent is involved here both the parents are re required that means the male and female gametes are not involved here gametes are involved okay plant parts are used to produce new plants now new plants arise from the existing parent through seeds your seeds is there sexual reproduction what do you need seeds okay no reproductive organs are required reproductive organs are needed new born plants are similar to the parent plant okay new born plants are not exactly copy of the parent plant okay fine children now germination of seed the new topic is germination of seed seed kaise germinate hogi until and unless it gets favorable condition and what are the conditions air water sunlight and suitable temperature okay these all things are required by a seed to germinate okay you can see here also the seeds that fall on the soil by dispersion need sufficient water sunlight nutrients to grow the growth of root and shoot from the embryo inside the seed is called germination okay what is germination the growing of the plant from a seed okay now i have told you what all proper conditions are required for germination first is sunlight temperature proper temperature air and water fine children wherever the seeds find all these conditions it will start germinating into a new plant fine children i hope the chapter is very much clear to you so was the chapter interesting do read it out again and again so that whatever problem you have it can be solved there and there only okay that's all for today have a nice day